And we're alive. Oh, I was, you did whoa. I did da 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 Roughed Up Design said, I don't know. Americans use the word P. You learned something. What, what else would we call it? What did you think that we called it? I need to go urinate, Mark. Is that is that is that what you guys thought that we said? <laughs> That's what I would think somebody from the UK would say, because the opinion over here is that everyone there is very prim and proper. That they would say, I need to go urinate. All right, guys. Today we're talking about how six-figure Etsy sellers prep their shops early. So this is a little collection of cool tips that we have from our own experiences selling on Etsy for nine years, plus the experiences of some of our top alphas who, of course, we kind of study and, and watch from a distance. So these are just things that I've personally recognized and some of which I have practiced myself. And we're going to start kind of basic. So a lot of this might be information that you already know or you're aware of, or maybe you just haven't been pushed over the edge to do it. Um, but as the weeks go on, what I plan to do is more holiday videos that get a little bit more in depth each time. So we're going to go general this time. And then maybe based on some of these topics, depending on which ones you guys kind of cling on to the most or have the most questions about, we will expand on those in either future episodes of the Friday Bean, or we should be back to creating normal recorded content very soon. Um, Mark hasn't gotten to edit a video in about four weeks, but that's because after our Handmade Alpha Academy launch, we've been very busy answering questions, getting everybody their free 12 months of E-Rank Pro, and all of that fun stuff. So it's been a little bit busy, but we're going to be getting back into the swing of normal recording because I think Handmade Alpha Academy students hit a point in the course where they just start going on autopilot, and we end up having far fewer questions. You just You just kind of know. You start to adapt a bit so uh what what's the what's the p agreement what did they say that we call amber it? said we say going to spend a penny going to spend a penny never heard that one before tony said in all caps make me a video for my shop and make then uh, new videos <laughs> need a how-to video H how to video on what tell us you gotta you gotta be more in depth i could teach you how to make an omelet I could teach, Mark could probably teach you how to like change your oil if you need to change your oil in your car. Uh, oh, oil is a word that I think Br oil. British people don't like it when Americans say oil. I think British are probably fine oil. with it, just everyone else in the world is afraid oil. when Americans say oil. oil. <laughs> <laughs> You're the ex military guy, you would know. Oil. Going yeah, don't say it too many times or a US soldier will kick in your front door. <laughs> Just joking, of those of you out there. I am a veteran. I'm allowed to make those jokes. <laughs> Amber, going for a tingle. What? How did we get on this topic? Uh, it's all about tinkling. I said that it was your last chance to go pee before we started streaming. That's right. So before we get into our topic today, I do have a little bit of news. L little. That was totally unintentional. Little bit of news. TikTok has the potential to go away. Um, we've been following the story. I don't use TikTok yet, and I told all the alphas that I would make one. I just never found the time to do it. But after we had a great interview with Cynthia, if you go down on my channel, you'll find a uh, video about TikTok from last year that Alpha Cynthia helped us with about how she got over like 80,000 followers on TikTok in her first few weeks or something like that. Maybe it was 10,000. <laughs> Maybe I'm way overshooting that. Maybe, I don't know. I, I've got eight in my head. Anyway, she got a lot of followers in a very short period of time. And then a lot of other alphas went and started using TikTok, found tons of success from it. I know that Lori from Lori's Laboratory found a lot of success from it. I constantly see some of you that I follow on Instagram and social media recycling your TikTok videos and uploading them in other places, which is great. Um, but with all of the privacy concerns it has been brought to our attention via one of our favorite tech youtube channels that TikTok may be banned in the united states and several other countries as other alphas have informed me several other countries are thinking about doing it as well 
because TikTok is a Chinese owned company. Now we're not going to get into the technicalities and politics of that, no. but um, it, it's privacy concerns basically. And I will say that as of about five, four or five months ago, maybe a little longer, U.S. military members were advised not to use TikTok uh, and because it violated uh, OPSEC rules, right? Because people were posting about stuff that they did and places they were and things like that. For anyone other than military, police, like government officials, TikTok is fine. If it, There's no such thing as a privacy concern when no one wants to be invasive about your privacy. Can you find out what they're doing? They are ripping something up. <laughs> I swear. Bring him over here. Quit being a grumpkin. Mr. He Gr wants love this morning. Mr. Grumpkin. And I'm not giving it to him because I'm freaking busy. So no, you stay here. In terms of TikTok, guys, um, no. you know, they're my big confusion about it is that they're saying that, you know, oh, your hand, your data could fall into the hands of a Chinese company. And what will they do with it? What will they do with it for one and for two? I feel like our data is probably already spread to multiple Chinese companies. Based if on you the have a smartphone, you don't have privacy. That's plain and simple. Yeah. So, like I said, not getting into the politics of it all, um, I'm more worried about the alphas who have built a solid yes. foundation through their marketing. If you currently use TikTok, I want you to spend your next few weeks, even if it's just, you know, preventative procedures that don't end up amounting to anything it's better to be safe than sorry if you have a big following on tiktok i want you to focus on trying to get them into a different funnel whether that be following you on instagram following you on another social media platform uh ideally on an email list but if if you've got like ten thousand tiktok followers and it's your biggest social media platform what are you going to do if you lose all of that overnight i mean for a lot of alphas they would be screwed right and yeah. we don't want to see that happen so any videos or anything that you need to back up from tiktok make sure that you're doing that um and also make sure that you are creating some way even if you include it in a funny video include a way where they can opt in to nope. you know sign up for your email list or direct them somewhere to go to sign up for an email list and see if you can get a few of those people somewhere else so let's see what do we have I love new technology and social media, but I was just like, heck, not another thing for the to-do list. Well, yeah. I mean, worst case scenario, TikTok goes away and you have to move to another platform. Best case scenario, you've already prepared another platform and moved people to it and you have another form to advertise to people. So, I mean, it, it, w it wouldn't harm to start moving people regardless. And if TikTok ends up not going away, then that's just and one extra source of... Uh, of people that you're going to be able to move. I'm pointing out that was stupid. Joanne's comment. I have been seeing some warnings in regards to tween challenges causing serious injuries. That th th TikTok ridiculous. is irrelevant to that. That is going to that has been taking place since before the internet was a thing. It's just more widespread. Uh, and when when we were teenagers, like you have the Tide Pod challenge and all that crap that teens were doing. When we were teenagers, it was like the the eraser challenge where you'd burn a hole with an eraser. Do you remember that? Yeah, and and like I remember my buddy's grandpa telling us stories of where they'd play. They they called it sissy, but there's like a million games like that where they would stand and they would throw a knife at the other person's foot and then you had to split further and then they would throw it down yeah. like that it's the equivalent of like you know, when when did we start with putting the hand on the table and stabbing the knife around the fingers that's a game like, i love playing that yeah but when I'm good at that but that was probably created in like the 18th century i don't know but regardless when, when knives came out <laughs> when knives came out though regardless guys those changes uh or those uh challenges They've been around forever, and it's going to happen on any platform. Don't I wouldn't just blame TikTok for that because if TikTok goes away, kids are going to find somewhere else to do them. So, um, let's see. Etsy rolled out a new way to show videos for our shops. We're we're going to get there, but today we're going to focus on holiday stuff specifically. But yes. that one is included. So, um, 
I'm all covered in cat hair now. Can you look over the comments real quick for me while I kind of... Yes, I may do that. All right, guys. Ever thought about teaching some YouTube videos. What? You like how to do YouTube videos? No. That's that's such a saturated that you can find so many videos on how to make YouTube videos. Yeah, and, and not to mention, like, it's the same one that I recommend to you guys. Focus on your expertise. If your expertise is creating sterling silver jewelry, don't start making shoes. You know, don't add shoes into your shop. I do business marketing and primarily Etsy. And I think that even Etsy, the fact that I've expanded out to business psychology neuromarketing in those things already, you know, is, is pretty expansive based, you know, since most Etsy YouTubers just focus on Etsy. So for, I wanted to say this too, for, for YouTube specifically, for most businesses, it's not going to be a great source of advertising for most people. Now, if you make like videos of you making your products or how to make your products and you post those here and there, that's, that's totally fine. But unless you're somebody that makes like big market items, like like big furniture, tables, cabinets, things like that. Like YouTube's not really going to be a great advertising space for you. There's not a lot of a interest in that. Uh, Ginger said the CEO of TikTok said he wouldn't comply, especially since the server info is here in the U.S. That doesn't matter if the U.S. government bans the app. I yeah, it's irrelevant. Yeah, that won't matter. And I, I would have to see a source on the the servers being here in the U.S. They probably have a server, I'm not going to get too into it, they probably have a server-based network where they have servers in every country that they operate in. They probably have a bunch here, a bunch in China, a bunch in the UK that they operate off of, but the main one is probably in China. Crappy Crafter said knives, Mark's childhood. <laughs> oh yeah, knives, swords, you name it. I wish All I right. could remember the name of that game. All right, um... Instagram is launching a TikTok type service. I think it's called Reels. It's being tested in France, Germany, and Brazil. Tony, are you okay? Tony said, I'm asking a question. What question? I don't know what question you're talking about. We're going to get to listing videos, I promise you. We, I just, I'm not going super in depth with it today because, for one, I don't have a lot of experience with it. Um, I haven't started utilizing it. But we are going to discuss it, and then I'm going to give you some resources on someone who knows a lot more about them than I yeah. do at this point. So, what up, Starlet and Mark? What up, he DJ said, and Joey? He says it's about adding. Yeah, we're, we're not going to cover adding videos to the listings until we have enough time. Yeah, no, that we will, and plus we'll have to screen share and stuff for you guys. So. Yes, and that's a whole other ballpark of a game. We have to set up totally different software for that. All right, guys, so let's get into it. We are only 15 minutes in, but I figured that the... <laughs> Thank you, Roughed Up Designs. The Pin Finger Nerve, Bishop, Stab Scotch, Stabber Scotch, Five Finger Filet. Five Finger Filet was the one that I was trying to think of. Thank you. That's <laughs> All right. So let's talk about holiday trends that you guys should be researching like right now. OMG, this is important. Um, <laughs> trends right now. We would want to look at both things that were trending around this time last year, as well as new occurrences in the market. You guys know what I'm going to say. Erank.com is the number one place that I recommend to research your trends. Um, I recommend if you have a basic or pro membership, basic is $5.99, pro is $9.99. Uh, both are monthly subscriptions, totally worth it. If you're gonna invest in one resource for your business, it should be E-Rank, just because it's very affordable and it's the one thing that's going to actually push you to the next level um, in terms of like, you know, making sure that you have like facts behind everything that you do. So using the trend buzz feature, which is my personal favorite, uh, you can go in and see, Yeah, I know. Uh, looks like it's pushing again. Are we back live yet? We are, and you're just sitting on your phone. Oh, I was. <laughs> I was telling there it them, goes. I was telling them I was reconnecting in the chat. You guys we, uh, <laughs> temporarily lost internet. I love how you were just <laughs> I was
was trying to let them know that we would be back. <laughs> you, know what, you know what being a CEO of a big company looks like? It was that. You can go and see keywords. Keep repeating. I wonder what happened there. All right. Anyway. <laughs> I don't know where it cut off, so I'm just going to try to <laughs> summarize. With the trend buzz, you can go and see keywords that are trending, and you can make sure that you're following things that are, are new to trend, so things that are appearing in the market over the last few months. Like I said, for example, slots, maybe unicorns. If you see names like these pop up or themes like these pop up, uh, it's a good indication that this is something that's going to carry over into the holidays, right? Um, so I would check your niche in particular. With the trend buzz, you can browse by category. Here, I'll put this on your side so you can keep an eye on it. Ooh, that's not what I wanted to do. Oh. Will you quit touching the mouse? You break it every time you touch the mouse. <laughs> oh, God, I'm sorry. I'm still a little crazy. Anyway, you can see the, tr the themes that are trending and you can make sure that you're creating products now that you can market for the holiday season related to these trends. And like I said, clicking on your actual category. So for example, if you make jewelry, clicking on the jewelry category within the trend, trend buzz. If you sell uh, art and collectibles, clicking on that particular category and seeing what themes in those categories are trending. That way you can make the products that are actually going to be in demand. Now that's one way to do it. The other way to do it is to go backwards in time. So rewind the tape a little bit, go backwards by clicking on our date ranges and choose the months leading up to the holidays when the sales are gonna be the most you know, active or the, the shoppers are gonna be the most active on Etsy. That's typically August, September really big, October getting bigger, and November is the biggest. So you wanna see what people were searching in August, September, October, and especially November of last year. So choose November 2019 in your date ranges or October 2019. You could even start with September 2019, though you're gonna get some Halloween keywords in there, obviously. But begin exploring the things that were popular last year because if they were popular around the holiday season last year- They're probably gonna be popular this year. Exactly, it's very likely that they're gonna be popular this year. So this is all in reference to the E-Rank trend, trend Buzz. It's one of my favorite tools and just a disclaimer, I am the head of marketing and PR at erank.com, but I do not get paid to recommend it. And I've been recommending it for far longer than I've worked for erank. So always got to throw in the disclaimer. Otherwise someone will get upset. Oh, uh, refreshed in your back. Yeah. Sorry about that. We, uh, our internet didn't show that it was down, but it looked like we lost internet for a couple of minutes. Sally said, ooh, almost exactly where you stopped. Well done, Starless Memory. I didn't know where we stopped. It's I was not usually that good. No, it's not at all. At all. Neither is mine. We both have an awful memory. <laughs> so that is how to search trends. Now, the next thing that you should begin doing after you figure out what you're going to make, because ideally you want to get your holiday products in your shop 90 days before you want them to sell. So, and this is because it's going to help build your listing quality scores 90 days is kind of the standard when it comes to being recognized by search engines uh, and especially with Etsy because you need that time to build your listing quality score through engagement, through sales, through good reviews. These are all things that build up your overall listing quality score, which is per listing. So that's why each listing will rank a little bit differently but you wanna get your keywords in very, very early. I would say at least August, September is when you wanna get good holiday keywords into your shop. One thing I will say though, is if you have a listing that is already performing well, it's a bestseller, uh, you, you sell it frequently, this is not a listing that I would touch. I wouldn't tweak it or try to add holiday keywords into it. But if you have listings that are already in your shop, maybe you create something small like a, a necklace that isn't selling really well, you might wanna experiment with some holiday terms like stocking stuffers or 
Christmas gifts for mom and try adding those into your listings. You can do this from the trend bus, which has keyword data on popular trending keywords, but a lot of the time what you get are short head keywords as opposed to the long tail keywords, which are really going to bring you one step closer to the ideal buyer who you want to target. Someone who is shopping for a very specific thing, which is, you know, we'll say rather than just silver necklace, which is a head keyword, they're searching for blue and green gemstone silver necklace. That buyer knows exactly what they want to buy. So putting those keywords in your listing is going to bring you one step closer to that buyer. And you're still going to be recognized in search for things like silver necklace, blue silver necklace, blue necklace, gemstone necklace. Etsy's going to identify all of those keywords, but you're also hitting someone who's being very specific as well. So getting keywords in your listings, uh, make sure that you're also using resources like the keyword tool on E-Rank and especially the Keyword Explorer, which is my personal favorite. If you're a free member, I believe that you can do five keyword lookups through the Keyword Explorer. Um, you don't have all of the data through E-Rank that you would get with a paid membership, but you can at least see the, I think you can at least see the searches for those keywords with a free membership. Uh, and these are searches by month. So you can see, you know, you have a little graph where you can actually see where the most spikes are in searches for specific keywords, which is really useful, especially if you're trying to list, we'll say Christmas stocking stuffers, and you want to know when exactly people really start searching for it. You can see a graph that shows by month, which month people start searching for Christmas stocking stuffers and so on. So all good ideas uh, for keyword research. And if you have a basic or pro membership, I even recommend building out a keyword list you should have that feature um, in the bottom left-hand corner of your E-Rank screen to create a keyword list while in the Keyword Explorer or the Keyword Tool. Start a holiday-specific keyword list where you track your holiday keywords. So what do we have? Anything Anything new before we move on to the next Quite one? Quite a bit. Okay. Um, super new and trying to binge all your content. Can you post links to your E-Rank how-tos for the beginners in this vid? Um, Heidi, what I would recommend doing is go to my channel. And right under my channel's banner, you know, my, my little banner with my me and the wolves, there is a small search okay. bar. Just type E-Rank into that small search bar there and all of my E-Rank videos will pop up. Excuse me. The trending tool in E-Rank is great. I'm surprised at how early people start shopping for the holidays. August. August what, is when I start to see it. What was the picture you sent me like a month ago from one of the craft stores? Was it fall decorations? Yeah, it was, uh, it was at Hobby Lobby. They already have fall and Christmas out. But that makes sense because people need craft supplies to make their yeah. crafts for the holidays early. So I would try to get on the craft store's schedule, <clears throat> Hobby Lobby probably being the best one because they seem to be the earliest uh, if we're talking about Hobby Lobby, Michaels, and Joann's in the U.S. Hobby Lobby always has their seasonal products out the earliest. So try to follow their trends. JoJo said, I wish E-Rank would break down the vintage categories and trends. I thought that the trend buzz did have vintage. The trend buzz should have vintage. Oh, unless you mean breaking vintage down even further. But vintage is its own category within Etsy. So that's why, that's how E Rank structures their categories. They're based on Etsy's categories. So, but trend buzz does have vintage as its own category within the trend buzz. You suggested shipping by December 1st. So when should we release holiday collections by? So. Let me let me go ahead and, and talk about shipping because I don't have it on my list to talk about today. I told everybody that December 1st is going to be a really ideal date to get your holiday products shipped out. And there's a couple reasons for this. For one, we're going to see more online shoppers this season than we ever have before because of COVID-19. Even if for some reason the virus is miraculously gone by December, which I doubt, um, especially here in the U.S., 
I don't see as many people flocking to stores as what we would normally see. More people are going to rely on online shopping, which is why this year on Etsy, you guys need to prepare more now than you ever have before. I expect this to be Etsy's best holiday season. So I recommend getting products shipped by December 1st because normally if we'll, we'll say from, you know, U.S. Uh, local shipping, if, if I'm shipping within the U.S., from the U.S. to the U.S., normally we're told around uh, November or I'm sorry, December 20th to get packages out to arrive by the 25th. No, we always say add a couple days on to that. So I recommend shipping by the 15th this year, though. The first, I think, is going to be our sweet spot because look COVID's at how, still going to be a thing. Look at how slow shipping is right now with everyone needing <clears throat> to order things online. Uh, that they, you know, people trying to stay out of stores, ordering online. Look at how slow shipping is right now. Look at what you guys are experiencing with your own Etsy orders and how they've slowed down. Look at how long it takes you to receive something in the mail when you order it online. Things are insanely slow right now. And if we think that they're slow now in the middle of summer, what's it going to look like when everyone is online shopping? It's going to be ridiculous. So December 1st is what I recommend. Especially um, if the second round of continuous stimulus checks that is being talked about gets pushed through. There's going to be a lot of online spending in the U.S. if that's the case. Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So uh, in terms of when should we launch our holiday collections, I would say October is the latest that you should launch, and I know that that sounds crazy. I would focus on getting them created oh, by July, August. That way you can launch September at the very latest and i know that that's crazy because it's not even christmas or it's not even halloween yet but getting those products in your shop early and getting those keywords in your shop early you are going to be the early adopters of those keywords and because you were the first to get your holiday keywords into your listings you are more likely to be shown in search this is so important guys you have more time to rev up what if we're having a fall line launching in August and winter line launching in October? Is that detrimental? Should we just combine them in one launch? It really just depends on your marketing efforts. It's not nothing is <clears throat> going to be detrimental. Um, you can still you can keep those launch dates. You're just not going to have as much time to market because if you're doing fall in August, you're going to have August, September, and a little bit of October, and then by October thirty first. People, right after Halloween, people are in full Christmas mode. It's like Thanksgiving doesn't even exist. But that's only going to give you from October 31st until November to market holiday product lines if you're launching those in October. Depending on when in October, you might have October and then part of November. But that's only going to be like, if you're launching Christmas products October 1st, we'll say, that will give you like a month and a half to really optimize your marketing before Black Friday. Yeah, because once December rolls around, people are usually done yeah. for most products. And not to mention, it's going to be risky for you to ship. Um, so it's completely up to you if you want to combine them. Uh, I would just try to launch that fall collection as soon as possible. The sooner you launch that fall collection, the, the better it'll be because you can try to get your holiday products out a little <clears> sooner. Uh, Amber asked a question. It looks like we got updates, but you might have another answer for it. How can I add the Christmas option uh, to every one of my 200 card designs without adding every single one again? Not like you can add the same variation to every listing. I don't want to start the process, then realize I've wasted my time and there was a better way. People recommended uh, Vela, Get Vela. Yeah, Get Vela, I've heard, is, a, is an option Quite for bulk editor. Unless you have any other... No, um... Because I never have that many listings, but Amber, uh, just don't don't mess with any of your listings that are already performing well. I when I was looking for um, Valentine's Day cards for Mark a couple months ago, um, was it Valentine's Day that I got you a card? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I actually saw some of your cards in search looking just for Valentine's Day cards. So you've got some really great performing cards in the queue. Don't edit and add Christmas terms to any of your cards that are doing well. Are not having the colors in your options then used as searchable keywords? I'm not quite understanding. Do you mean in your 
variations or in your attributes. Your attributes are considered keywords. They're like additional tags. So if in your attributes you say this product is blue and you select blue from the drop down menu, then that is counted as a tag. However, if you're creating variations where you say to the to the customer choose which color you want and you enter in a bunch of colors, those do not count as keywords. <clears throat> Has anyone had any luck using Etsy's bulk editing feature to add or delete tags on a large number of listings at one time? I tried it, but it doesn't always work. Man, I'm I swear, sure. any website that has bulk editing it never works correctly, and you almost always have to use an outside tool. I, I don't like using bulk <clears throat> editing for anything. I, I like to be meticulous, and I want to make sure that every listing has its own unique you attention. End, you, end up, you end up not paying as much attention to what you're trying to do for individual things. Yeah. I understand adding keywords to existing listings in August, September, but this seems too soon for actually launching a Christmas line. My pieces are drawing, so we'll be very Christmas. Is a later launch okay? I, I explained why. So I'm not going to say that it's okay or not okay. There's no rule that says you have to no. do it. It feels early to you because we have it, you know, we are used to not celebrating a holiday way, way, way in advance. But when you see other shops and other, uh, other even big box stores already rolling out Christmas stuff, it's not too soon. It's that's business, baby. You got to get your products out early. I know it feels icky and it, and it sucks when it's this hot outside and you don't even have Halloween stuff out yet, but that's business. It's going to help you to optimize those listings so they perform well in search. I'm going to tell you guys the very best practices and you guys get to choose if you want to follow them. What I don't want to happen though is you guys have regrets later where you say, man, I wish I would have done this. Yeah. Uh, it's, so. it's one of those things that it's, it's better safe than sorry because we say, you know, probably try to get your products shipped by December 1st. Obviously, you're going to have more orders roll in and you still need to ship those. But if you want to follow the like December 20th guideline that USPS has out and then half of your products end up not showing up to the customers, you know, it's 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 one of those things where every year we have to ship earlier and earlier. When we first started doing this, we would tell people to ship by like the 16th to the 20th. And that was okay at the time. And then a year later, that wasn't okay anymore. Even USPS was recommending like the 15th at the latest, get your products in by the 15th. Um, Tinfoil Hatter had asked a question under, uh, can we move keywords from one keyword list to another? Um, I don't think so, but what you can do is click the keyword from when you have one of your lists open, just click that keyword so it expands out uh, and you have all the data. And then I, I think you would just need to reselect that keyword and add it into a different list from your bottom left keyword list box. Flocking to stores. I need to get the wax out of my ears. Yes, flocking. Everything should be created six months in advance. That gives two months to create and two to sell everything. You'll want at least one full month for shipping. Yeah, it just depends on what you make. Yeah, I mean, that's a good rule of thumb, but not... I mean, it, it, you don't have to create six months in advance. Just make sure that you are, because if that were the case, we'd all be screwed, right? Because <laughs> we don't have six months to prepare for the holidays. Um, it's a good rule of thumb. If you can make things that early, that's great. But 90 days to get thing, 90 days between when you want to sell. And remember, our, our date to sell is not Christmas. Don't use December as your benchmark. No. Use Black Friday as your benchmark. You're, you're racing to Black Friday, not to Christmas Day. Black Friday is going to be the day when we see the most sales. Yeah. Uh, Deb said, reports from customers first class is still one to three weeks in the U.S. It's going to be worse. Amber, exactly. if, you're, if, 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 you're, if you're still in here, Amber, uh, is it about the same for you? Is that what you're seeing? One to three weeks? Uh, that's what I was thinking about October 1st. Yes. Do you mean 1st December UK shipping to the U.S.? For the no. UK, probably earlier. Yeah, you're going to want to get your products out in late November, I would say. Yeah, because uh, that last person said one to three weeks. And so that would be 7, 21. So if you were to ship on December 1st, that would be the 21st. That's only four days of leeway. Yeah. So I would I would give it a little bit of extra time. You can still ship up until that point. What but Basically what we do, once it gets to the point where it starts to get risky to ship things to people, you need to add a disclaimer when you're sending your swipe files or when you're messaging your customers after orders to let them know that their product might not arrive by Christmas. Yeah. You got to protect your butt there and make sure it's listed in your listings and in your shop. 
like make sure you have your holiday stuff nailed down and we'll probably release stuff to help you guys prepare for that when it's a little closer to the time yeah i might put i might make a video that shows all the places to put holiday deadlines if yeah. you guys want to start prepping for the holidays early um i actually did a holiday series last year that nate edited it is I mean, just scroll down on my channel and you'll find it. And I think I have a playlist for holiday videos as well. You can totally start watching last year's holiday videos early and, and just use that to prepare for this year. And I'll also have my Black Friday survival guide probably releasing, I would say, in August or September. I'll get that out for you guys. Uh, how do you get the orange box on a name? You know, I actually don't know. Do you know? What do you mean? Well, there's nobody in here right now that I'm seeing, but every once in a while somebody the, will comment and there'll be you, an orange box. If they tag, the no, it's if they tag, it, like for example here, Amber. No, that's would, not what I'm referring to. Sometimes people just pop up oh. and they have an orange box like here. No idea. Yeah, I have no idea. Well, let's go ahead while you're looking for questions. Let's we move have on to the next. Load more, so. That's fine. Let's move on to the next thing. Um, Next thing that I want you guys to focus on is a photo overhaul. If you have photos that aren't cohesive, that aren't great, I want you to spend the next few weeks reshooting any photos that aren't doing like that aren't up to par <laughs> on a search page. Or if you have products in your shop that you've had for a long time and they're not selling, I think that right now would be a really great time to experiment with a different thumbnail. And I know that this sounds crazy, but hear me out, okay? I had an owl key with crystal eyes, and the customer could customize the crystal eyes on this owl key necklace, okay? And in my example photo, I created one around fall with orange eyes. And I had, I think it was orange, something fall colored. And I had that as my thumbnail photo, right? But that key did not sell. I could not sell it. Even though I had all of my other additional colors that they could choose listed uh, down the edge of my listing photos, because I always put the colors going down in a line so they can see, like, you know, they can choose any of those colors right from the thumbnail. It still wasn't selling. So... All I did was go in and edit that photo. I didn't even reshoot it with different colored eyes. I actually took it into iPicky and used the uh, hue tool and dragged the hue and changed just the eye colors to look more like my turquoise crystals. And that key started selling like crazy and became one of my best sellers. And they had the option to select blue crystals from the beginning. It was just one of the variations available from that singular listing. But because the thumbnail did not show a color that they were really gravitating towards, when I switched it to blue, it completely changed the perception of that photo. So if you have listings that aren't selling very well, right now is a great time to go in and start playing with different thumbnail ideas because it might not be the product that's the problem. It might just be how you've displayed that product. Another really cool thing that you can do is if you have the time and you don't have a million listings in your shop, get yourself a very small holiday prop and start reshooting thumbnail photos just with that small holiday prop. Maybe you could go to the craft store and get yourself like a tiny little pine branch to just put off in the background. For me, I have one that has snow over the pine branch so that it's still very light colored and white. Um, and I lay my key next to it. And it just, it, it keeps my shop cohesive, but it adds a little something extra to show shoppers that you're active for the holidays. And you can wait to put that prop, uh, those photos in your shop. You could wait until October to maybe put those in. But it's a good idea to do little things that make people realize that your shop is prepared for the holidays. And that's just one little tip that I have. But you can also start working on marketing photos, getting some little fun props from the craft store, like little branches and little Christmas ornaments and things, and try taking some fun photos that you can use for marketing that are going to ramp you up for the holidays on social media. Um, and, and we talked about listing videos. <laughs> Do we got a spammer? Troll Hi, in I'm the new. dungeon! Hi, I'm new. Hi, I'm new. Hi, I'm new. Hi, Hi. I'm new. Hi. Hi. Hi, I'm new. I'm dad. Hi. <laughs> 
Um, so, and, and then I also wanted to acknowledge listing videos. I had a couple of people asking about those. That's a new feature from Etsy. Listing videos are a really cool way to go in and create different views of your product so people can see how it is 3D in action, yada, yada. I've not personally made any videos on listing videos because I don't make videos on anything until they're pushed out of beta. The reason for this is I don't want to put a bunch of hours into creating something and then it never get pushed out of beta. But it seems very likely that this feature in particular will be pushed out of beta and to the public eye because they're already testing it with small groups of buyers. So right now, if you are in the beta test group for listing videos, only other sellers who also are opted into listing videos are going to see listing videos but they've just this week started pushing it out to a small group of buyers. Now, if you want to learn more about listing videos, I highly recommend going to Pam Duthie's channel. It's P-A-M-D-U-T-H-I-E, Pam Duthie. She is my partner in crime over at E-Rank. I love her to death, and she has some great videos covering listing videos. Plus, she just did a blog. If you go to erank.com slash blog, the very first blog there is going to talk about listing videos. That's her uh, her blog that she did, and it is phenomenal. So go check that out if you want to learn more about it. I've added into Pam's blog, I added some really cool motion, like little GIFs in there so you can see some listing videos in action. Uh, it, it's, it's a really cool feature, guys. So make sure that you check that out because this could be a big game changer this holiday season, especially when Etsy has listing videos, but platforms like Amazon and eBay don't have listing videos. So that gives us a, a little bit of a competitive advantage over these marketplaces. Um, but yeah, Pam Duthy, she's got some great videos to watch. Let's go ahead and answer a couple questions, and then we will move on to marketing photos. How much more do you got there? Because We're fine. Just... Okay. I'm not worried about it. I am. Is Golden Girls an American thing in November? 32K searching for it then. Golden Girls is kind of always a thing here. People go through phases. Yeah, the Golden it'll, Girls... It'll pop up in memes, and then people will go crazy for it for a couple months. Go, yeah, Golden Girls. I think that holiday, uh, there are a lot of people who do funny, hol quirky holiday gifts themed around the Golden Girls, but it is copyright, so don't make anything themed in Golden Girls unless, you know, you have good lawyers. Are keywords tags or are keywords attributes? You've got that backwards. Tags are keywords and attributes count as tags but all of those are keywords a tag is a keyword a keyword can also go in your title an attribute counts as a keyword okay posted a link in the group for the e-rank intro it's a bit old but it might help the alphas Comments for freaking days. That's <clears throat> business, baby. Starla 2020. Yeah. We have, <clears throat> our viewership has grown literally like double what it normally is. We were at like 120 cool. before the last launch. Now we're give actively at like 250. No, don't give us cool. We have so many. All right, get through them. <laughs> um, would there be a difference in posting our listings now, but uh, marketing launching them closer to the holidays? Yeah. In fact, that's a great idea, um, Mallory. Get your products into your shop now, but you could... Uh, you could really rev up your marketing later for the holiday season if you want to make sure that you're keyword optimizing. It can kind of mess up with your launch schedule a little bit. But what I recommend is if you can, if you want to just get your products out now, rather than teasing a holiday launch or a Christmas launch uh, around Black Friday, treat your Black Friday sale, which hopefully you plan on doing a Black Friday sale, treat that like a launch. Talk about how you're going to be launching a holiday sale on this day. Biggest sale of the year. Uh, people freaked out when I held this sale last year. Literally the lowest my prices will be all year. Pe things are going to sell out. Just use that scarcity aspect and really tease your discount season, your discount day, your sale day, whether that be Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Small Business Saturday. 
I recommend Black Friday. It's it's going to be your biggest, but you could do all three days if you wanted to. That's the thing that you should wrap up for. Anybody have a hint on how to photograph tan or beige correctly and gray is gray, not bluish? I'll say for gray, if you do it on a light or just white background, you can pull the saturation down until the gray is back to its natural state. Or you can use something like a photo box and ensure that there's nothing colored in the room that can influence that gray to a blue color. Yeah, a lot of Same it's thing not with beige. A lot of it's not in the shooting, it's in the editing. So Well, and and your light setup is gonna make all the difference. If you're photographing mm-hmm. a lot of gray products, you should probably invest in a pretty good light setup and take a good course or a good set of instructions on how to actually photograph like high end stuff, like how a big company would photograph stuff. There, there's tons of courses out there for stuff like that. Uh, so should we make our items and add as we go along and then launch when they are all listed in the shop? Um, Fiona, you're an HAA. For you, I recommend following HAA. Um, what I'm helping you with in HAA is creating longevity and creating launch schedules that your customers are going to recognize mm-hmm and expect that way when you have launches they know to pay attention we're conditioning your audience and that takes time so when i'm talking about these things like getting things out early this is more and i do want haa students to get your products out early but i would not recommend just adding things willy-nilly into your shop because what you're doing is starting the foundation for a raving following which is the core of handmade alpha academy so i would recommend staying the path following the course and if you want to get your collection out early for your holiday products do that but follow the launch strategy from haa next i'm working on it crappy crafter said she got procreate on her ipad yeah procreate's dope i got a buddy that draws anime and stuff using that uh Amber answered your question and said that UK postage is either yeah, super fast or shopping, shockingly slow. And then Sally immediately after said it's taking me three to five weeks Ooh. from UK to US. Yeah, it's different from everywhere. You, you should see um, if you, I don't know, USPS might not have information for other countries, but I know that uh, they have like shipping estimate times. So you can get on there. You should be able to put in where your country is and they should be able to tell you. Uh, if you use your tags, etc., for your holiday launch, is it better to list more quantities, such as a quantity of 10 versus a quantity of 4? If it goes out of stock and you relist, does that reset all your tags no, and higher listing? No, your tags don't reset. That's not how. That's not what renewing does. Renewing, every time your product renews through a sale, not by going in and clicking renew, uh, but every time your product renews through a sale, it helps your overall listing quality score, which can boost you higher in search. Now, what we normally recommend on the off seasons is to list your products in lower quantities, even if you have a lot, because it helps with that scarcity aspect. If someone sees that there's only one available or two available, they're more likely to make that purchase fast, right? For the holidays though, I recommend getting more quantities in your shop because people might want to buy multiples. So the advice that I give throughout the year to have lower quantities, that's great for scarcity, good for the summertime, good for the springtime. For holiday time, you want to have higher quantities because someone might want to buy lots of your products, right? So this is where we're going to shift the advice that I typically give, and we're going to start adding more quantities in. That way, we're, for one, you don't want to have to go in and constantly add more products in. And for two, you also want to make sure that if someone wants to buy more than one as a gift, then they have the ability to do it. Uh, I've had one order stop at Chicago, and others are taking a couple few weeks. Yeah, I can speak, Chicago's speak the dispatch from it's, it's, well, it's one of them. There's, yeah. they're, they're all over the place. But um, Chicago Customs is absolute butt crack. So if your stuff gets through there, there's a small chance it'll get stuck. I've had numerous things get stuck there for like three to six months. Colleen. Um, is it too soon to activate holiday listings to get the keywords in there? Nope. Nope. Nope, not too soon. You can, if you want to go ahead and get them in now, um, don't expect them to sell right away. Obviously, the the sales probably. You know, 
I would even I would even wait until next month. Make sure that you go over everything and then try to get them in next month because that lack of activity on the initial initial first few weeks where people aren't shopping at all for holiday products might be not so good for your listing quality scores. Um, but I would say next month, definitely consider getting some holiday listings in your shop. I feel that Black Friday is good for electronic goods rather than my thing. No. Jewelry. No, absolutely not. Black Friday is good for everything. Yes. Black Almost everything. I would and you're in the UK, so it's not as crazy there as it is here. But in the US, people literally kill each other's on kill each other on Black Friday trying to shop like in stores for anything. Right, and you want to appeal to that US market. So, sore I'm reaching across like this is driving me nuts. Oh, photos drive me nuts. <laughs> I I will say for those of you that have to sit and edit like several hundred photos at a time when you're doing your product launches, like at 10 to 15 minutes out of every hour walk away look at something when we were in the military they had the rule that like you try to 10 minutes every hour to look at something that's at least 10 feet away because it restores your body's natural ability at depth perception which will in turn make you better at editing your photos uh like crafting items but then i never take photos and list them yeah it, it could be it'd be that way all right while you're uh, while you're finding the next question, I'm going to move on. We talked a little bit about getting some marketing photos done, going and buying yourself some cool holiday props. Uh, even if it's hot and sweaty in your area, make it look like it's snowy or fun or try to add a little bit of a holiday element to your photos. It's, it's really nice when you do outdoor photos to take them in the summer and make it look like it's winter rather than sitting outside in the winter and freezing your butt off, which I've done many times. Um, the week before Halloween, I would say, is a great time to start really pushing your holiday marketing because right after Halloween is over, over, everyone is going to be in total Christmas mode. Nobody's going to care about Thanksgiving in terms of like, you know, it's almost like Thanksgiving is just your practice dinner before you prepare for your big Christmas dinner. So that is the time when people are going to really start focusing on their holiday shopping right after Halloween. So the week before Halloween is a great time to roll out all of your seasonal Christmas marketing uh, and really hit it every single day full force through November until Black Friday. Daily marketing, videos, photos, yada yada. Um, next thing is I would recommend getting in your shop and tightening up your branding, making sure that your banner is nice and clear. If it is blurry at all, I would work on getting that fixed, making sure that all of your branding elements like your shop photo, those all need to be crisp, clear, professional, and you really want someone to build an overall idea of what your brand is about or the feeling that your brand represents within seven seconds of cl clicking on your shop link. Seven seconds is what we really rely on in terms of building a first impression of anything. We gather our emotions within seven seconds. Uh, I'm sure that you guys have experienced this maybe walking into a restaurant and you look around, you take in the atmosphere and you automatically decide, wow, this place is fancy. I'm way underdressed or, oh, this place is kind of sketchy. I hope they don't spit in my food. You know, you get these feelings within seven seconds of walking in somewhere and our online storefronts are no different. Within seven seconds, somebody has already gained all of the feelings that they're going to experience. They, they have already figured out what your shop is about. So it's really useful to make sure that your banner and your shop photo are cohesive and they help to create whatever feeling it is that you're trying to represent. And if you have more questions on this, uh, my building a brand mind map episode is really good. I've got a couple other really great branding exercises on my channel, so feel free to go look for those. What do we have next? Lots of lots of lots of. Debbie Shrey said, is it essential to use an SLR camera or can you get good photos from a phone or iPad? Using an iPad saves time, but I would have better results if I used my good camera, even though it takes longer. That's totally up to you. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much up to you. I will say using a DSLR camera is going to be more time intensive and a steeper learning curve if you don't already know how to use a camera. 
Yeah. Plus, it's not just the camera you have to consider. You have the camera, you have the lenses, you have the filters if you're going to be shooting outdoors, you have the lights, you have the setup. There's a whole bunch more. And if you're using a product that has, if you like really zoom in on it, has a lot of imperfections and things in the materials, you're going to see all of that. So it's a lot more editing that gets involved. So yes, SLR cameras are always going to be, well, I'm not going to say always, for the time being are better than phones, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to benefit you more than using a phone. There's an in-between, guys. I don't, I have a DSLR and I have, you know, I have my phone and I do not use my DSLR for my product photos. I use my Nikon Coolpix L820, which is going on like eight years old now. Mm -hmm. Um, Mark bought it for me when I first started my business and it is still my go-to point and click camera for my product photos. So if you guys need a camera that's a little bit cheaper than a DSLR with a much, uh, much less steep learning curve that you can go in and take great photos fast, especially close up, Nikon Coolpix L820 is the one that I definitely recommend. Yeah, it's, it's great for what we do. And I will say, uh, I was tagged in a post on the Facebook group. I did end up commenting back on that. The new Galaxy S or the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, I think is what it's called, was leaked. Um, if y'all didn't know, the most recent Samsung phones have, I th don't, don't quote me on this, but I, I put the actual spec on the Facebook post, but they have two 11 megapixel cameras, or no, two 12 megapixel cameras and a 64 megapixel camera, which is just under DSLR quality. So just keep that in mind. If you're the kind of person that likes to upgrade your phone every year, the Samsung's higher end line, like the S20 Plus, the S20 Plus 5G, Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, they all have 64 megapixel cameras and two 12 megapixel cameras. The newer iPhones have a single, I think it's a single, uh, 11 megapixel camera. So that'll, right. that'll give you a hint of the quality. Okay. Uh, that was one question. Oh, okay. Go ahead and... Uh, do you recommend editing your shop banner to include some holiday bling? That's up to you. Yeah. I keep it... What I don't recommend doing is, like, <laughs> if you have very specific branding colors, don't add a million crazy Christmas colors onto your banner. I, I hate seeing that. Um, make sure that it matches your branding, but a little like holiday thing here and there, I think it looks good. I always add a little string of Christmas lights onto my banner just to show that, hey, I'm ready for the holidays. <laughs> uh, from the email, since this prototype group was such a success yesterday, we gave all sellers access to the video upload tool, which continues to be in beta. Okay, cool. So all sellers have it now. Um, it just doesn't look like buyers have it. Do, 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 Thanks, Mark. Shooting in a light box, shooting on white and shade outdoors, all screwed up. Man, it's, there's so many different ways you can take your photos, but that's just like there's different ways to perfect each technique. So you just kind of got to work with it till you find what you like. Uh, ba, 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 ba. UK is the worst. My mom lives here, and I have to have her Christmas presents sent by mid-November. Yep. All right. So just, while you're yeah, finding, just, just continue. Yeah. While you're finding questions, um, the very last thing, which is one that I always have alphas ask me to teach you how to do. There's a reason that I don't, uh, but starting a funnel, starting an email list through a service like MailChimp. The reason that I don't teach you guys a click by click on how to do that is because I teach it within handmade alpha Academy. And the reason I keep it in handmade alpha Academy are there are too many ways for you to mess it up and break the law and potentially risk, you know, owing thousands and thousands of dollars. It's too risky for me to just put that information out in the public and someone end up misinterpreting it or doing something wrong. In Handmade Alpha Academy, I can answer questions about things, um, but in the public, I can't. However, you can do your own research. If you write down things like GDPR, uh, and do some research on it. We've got some videos on my channel about GDPR and the CAN Spam Act. Those are the two big ones that you should take note of. I think California also now has something that is very similar to GDPR. So if you're already following GDPR, you should be good. But MailChimp themselves 
have tons and tons of YouTube videos that you can follow and you can use to set up your own email list funnel. This is going to take people off of social media platforms and it's going to put them in an environment that is designed for you to market to them. That's literally what an email list is. It allows you to keep them updated on new collection launches, on uh, when you have sales, on work in progress photos, things that are upcoming. Uh, and it really allows you to get everybody into an environment where you can just pitch your products. That's what an email list is. It's an opportunity to reach the people who are most interested in buying. Questions? Mm -hmm. So if attributes are tags, it'd be better to put hand painted instead of just paint. Attributes count as tags, but where? what else are you... Attributes count as tags, so you're selecting an attribute, right? And if you have that attribute selected, you do not need to type it out into your tag section. That's that's basically what I mean. I'm terrible at figuring out what to send in emails for my VIP groups. How do you figure out what email, what to email without seeming spam, too spammy to keep your audience engaged? So don't worry about seeming too spammy. That's, that's the big thing that I hear is people say, I don't want to send emails. It feels spammy. People are joining your email list because they want you to sell to them. That's why they joined. They're interested in your mm. product. So, and if they feel like you're being spammy, they just won't receive your emails anymore. They'll unsubscribe. They'll unsubscribe. So no, don't worry about that. Yeah, all, all the things. And you're in Handmade Alpha Academy, correct? So you should have the Marketing Mountain timeline to follow. You want to make sure that you're sending work in progress photos, letting them know when a new collection is coming. Oh, a new collection is coming in a month. Get ready. Oh, it's launching this week. Okay, the new collection is tomorrow. Here's the new collection. And then a week later, showcase a specific product from your collection. Oh, here's my new snowflake necklace. Here's how you can wear it. Uh, you can give it as a gift, yada, yada. Oh, now we're having a sale. This week we're, we're having this flash sale. It's lasting for 48 hours. And then the next day, oh, there's only 24 hours left. Better get in on it. Oh, there's only five hours left. Last chance to shop. There are a million things that you can do. My big suggestion is if you don't know what to email people, join a big business's email within your niche. So if I sell necklaces on Etsy, I might join Tiffany & Co. or Hellsberg Diamonds email list to see what type of emails that they send frequently. It really helps you to kind of gain some perspective on, you know, this whole seeming spammy. That's why people join email lists. They want your products. Study what some of the big brands in your industry are doing and then try to match up your marketing to theirs. For keywords, is it better to have long tail keywords or have head keyword that is low competition and high searches and high clicks? You can have a long tail keyword and still be identified for the head keyword that is within your long tail keyword. If I am listing a blue and green gemstone necklace, I am still being hit, I'm still being recognized for the head keyword blue necklace or gemstone necklace or green gemstone necklace or green necklace. So get a long tail in and those head keywords within your long tail, you're still going to be picked up for those. It, it's best to just do long tail keywords because you're going to be identified for all of those head keywords as well. Etsy's going to mix and match and make new keywords out of all of the keywords that you have. They don't have to be side by side. What kind of deals would you suggest for Black Friday? Um, that's 100% dependent on your price points. There's no way that I can really advise on that. I give uh, a double dip discount. I'm not going to go into the details of that because I have two whole videos on it. So go on to my channel into last week's holiday uh, marketing series that I did. Watch my double dip strategy. That's the one that typically makes me around anywhere between six to ten thousand dollars in a day that's the one that i would recommend so look for my double dip strategy that's going to help you a ton the picture should be of me doing this and amy my dog is somewhere on the thumbnail mallory asked me to repeat what i said about depth perception and stepping away so basically we obviously we see in three dimensions when you're stuck staring at a two-dimensional surface that doesn't move your eyeballs start to strain. That's why if you ever sit in front of your computer screen for like two or three hours, especially if you're one of those people that puts their face up to the screen and you look away and it like takes you a minute to adjust, 
that's not good for you. So every 10, or 10 minutes out of every hour, and it doesn't have to be a combined 10 minutes, two minutes here, three minutes there, whatever you got to do, look away at something that's at least 10 feet away to help restore your body's natural ability to perceive depth. And when you're editing, especially when you're doing things like editing photos and videos, being able to have a concept of depth when it comes to shadows and crevices and cloth and whatever else that you've got going on, it's going to be easier for you to edit your photos. Not only that, colors can start to distort over time when you're staring at a, a, a screen, if, especially if you're not on the higher end of monitor like what we use here now because they emit so much blue light that your perception can kind of get a little wonky so walking away and coming back you might be able to make better decisions on how you edit your photos and how you adjust the coloring and stuff and amber was freaking out because she thought we were hitting the mic but she was rubbing the cable on her headphones that's pretty funny i thought we were only to have white backgrounds and no props i love my props though no i've no. i've never said only white backgrounds and no props you, ha you had to have because people ask that in every live stream no you can have props and different colored backgrounds if they work for your product yeah I, i've never in my life said no props only white backgrounds i say etsy prefers white or light backgrounds white or light I, I need to like make a whole marketing campaign about me i've never said only use white backgrounds and no props props should be subtle props should not distract from the item sometimes props don't fit your photos occasionally if i see in the handmade alpha facebook community somebody has a bad prop i'll let them know hey this prop maybe you don't need this prop or maybe this isn't the best prop but that doesn't mean that you can't use props in fact props are necessary for some products which i've talked about like the last two weeks on friday beans so you can keep your props don't worry i'm not taking your props away crappy crafter said i still want an uncensored mark podcast no you don't uh sharon queen said what would you america sharon green oh, you read fire queen and sharon green i'm so my eye but see i need to walk away uh, what would you Americans be? You, you, what do you mean, you Americans? <laughs> be prepared or find acceptable to pay for shipping of jewelry from the UK, please. It'd be really helpful to have an idea, dude. Sharon, it might be more in your best interest to go based on what what you would need to go based on how much it costs. Don't yeah. don't inflate or deflate your shipping. If you're not going to offer free shipping, just charge what it costs to ship from yeah. from there to here. And if you want to offer more than one option at different price points, offer the options based on the type of, of shipping that is offered there. And if you can't do, see, this is there's so many different options. If you can't do the free shipping, but you want your shipping, I oh, got it. Don't do that. You mess it up every time. <laughs> if you want, if you want to move the shipping down because you want it to look more competitive to us people compared to the rest of your market you need to add that cost back into the product because you don't want to be losing money on shipping you should never lose money on shipping unless you're offering free shipping but even then you're still adding the cost of the shipping into the product or at least a good majority of it we can't speak on behalf of all americans because this is the land of everyone having a different opinion on everything so <laughs> just like and like crappy crafter said all americans want free shipping we're spoiled af so maybe just add it into your price yeah how about half of us probably think that way the other half don't care everyone's got a different opinion here uh can i make a storefront from my mobile phone no nope. technically no i don't, don't no i don't think you can make it you can i think you can add and manage your products but you need to have a computer to run your business Da, 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 da. I'm going to try to skip the kind of lightning around these. What are the optimal banner dimensions again? I feel like they keep changing. You're going to have to Google it. I'm yeah. not sure offhand. Do, 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 do. Would you change your banner to look festive for the holiday season? We kind of talked about that already. So we'll... Yep. Someone finally noticed my hair is shorter. It's significantly shorter. It's like and four then, inches. And then somebody... Where was it? Somebody said, forget starless haircut. Mark's beard's looking sharp. <laughs> He's getting, he's got all these beard I don't even products. really do anything with, I haven't been doing anything with it. It's just been healthy. Uh, boop, 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 Mark said 100 likes and they'll stream twice a week. Not really, I just made that up, but still, yeah, that's not happening. Not, not, not at the moment. Not for 100 likes. 10,000 10, likes and I'll stream twice a week once. <laughs> <laughs> uh it's a bragging right oh my god where'd you get that necklace it's all the way from the uk it's really unique 
Uh, what camera is that again? The Ki- Ni- Coolpix L820. Nikon Coolpix L820. I'm um, a nose zigi. Do, 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 do. Does that work for France? I don't know what does work for France. Um, <laughs> We've got so we were so far ahead of you guys in the chat. Yeah, here. man. There's so many more people in here now. Sorry if it takes us a minute to get to y'all's questions, because we'll go ahead and look through those. I want to talk about three things to stop doing okay, while do you're that. looking. You look for questions while I'm doing that. So three things to stop doing for the holiday season that will not convert to sales. And I see some of you doing it. You may say you don't do it, but I see I'm in all the Etsy groups, all of them, lots of them, and I see you doing it. You better stop it. <laughs> First thing, uh, flooding your shop links, Sh- just shop link spamming in all of the different Etsy groups out there, just saying, oh, check out my shop, check out my shop, check out this product, check out this necklace, check out this, check out that. That's fine. At least edit your own photo and create a marketing photo. Don't just grab your shop link or a product link, slap it into a bunch of groups and have the whatever thumbnail photo auto generates from it. Take more time into it. Nobody likes shop link spamming. And you guys don't shop from shops that shop link spam, do you? Do you ever shop from anybody who just says, buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff? I've never done that. So no more shop link spamming. Stop doing that. Go edit your own photos. Make some cool marketing photos that actually grab their attention and add the link to buy in your caption after you write a captivating description that actually leads people to want to read it. Uh, Next thing to stop doing, obsessing over daily stats. I've got so many people who say, oh, my stats are this today and they were this yesterday. What did I do wrong? Or, oh, I I went from this to this with the spotted on Etsy tool with E-Rank and I'm freaking out. No, don't don't do day-to-day stats. You're going to drive yourself crazy. Go week by week. Spread it out a little bit. If you stare at your stats day to day, you're going to drive yourself insane. I don't even look at my stats hardly ever. I only look at my stats if I notice that I'm having overall, you know, decreases in sales, which right now I am because I don't have a new collection out right now. But when you obsess over stats, there's so many other things that you could be doing with that time to actually optimize the amount of traffic coming into your shop. So don't obsess over your stats. And the last thing is obsessing over low summer sales. Still people are doing that. They're still posting about, oh, I, I didn't make any sales today. Oh, why isn't this selling? I don't know why this isn't selling. You know, don't obsess over low summer sales. Nothing is going to do well in the summer. That's the nature of summer. People are outside. They're spending time outside. Even if it's not summer in your area, it's summer in the United States. 56% of shoppers right now on Etsy are from the U.S. Most shoppers are coming from the U.S. They're not buying as much right now. So don't freak out so much about it. It's okay. Things are going to pick up very soon. Use this time to plan. All right, let's do it. I just looked at the Nikon you mentioned. It says 16 megapixels. Is that good? I'm sorry. I don't know anything about that stuff. Yeah, 16 megapixels is fine. The newest iPhone has an 11 megapixel camera. Uh, I have the Galaxy S20 Plus. How do we find your course? My course is not open right now. It will not be opening until December 1st because enrollment actually just closed for the season. But there is a waiting list link. If you signed up for the waiting list last season, you have to re-sign up if you want on the December waiting list, okay? So if you didn't end up joining the course in June, you'll have to re-sign up. Link is down below. If you sign up for that waiting list link, you'll be notified when we open Handmade Alpha Academy for December. Um, But you will need to... No, wait, what was I going to say? Crap, I I lost. You will need to re-sign up if you signed up for the June one. Signing up does not obligate you to buy. However, it will ensure that you get a massive discount on enrollment day. So... All right. Mm-hmm. I'm looking. There's so many people. There's still 220 people in here. We're just getting comments like crazy. If you're still in here, throw up a like on this video. Yes, please. Give us, like, give us a like. Give it helps us, us out. Love. And just, uh, <laughs> just another heads up. Um, we have so many people in the replay are mean to Mark, and I swear. If you guys, if replay people, it's never live people. It's always replay people. 
I'm just going to start like banishing people from the channel. Don't be mean to Mark. I don't know why people I think... The thing is, I don't care if you're mean because I have the ability to just make sure you can't watch our videos anymore. Th so no, just be mean. I, I had to delete so many mean comments about Mark last week and Mark... Guys, All I did was talk. He's my husband. If you talk bad about him, I'm going to be upset because I love him. Don't talk crap about my husband. And if you do, just expect that you're not going to be able to access my videos This anymore. is a Friday live stream. We do some material. We do some banter. We, we chat. interact. We hang out. Normally, we cut these at 1. I've been nice and haven't been hitting end stream at, right at 1 o'clock. We've been going on. I go like... I'm on a very specific meal plan, and I go over my times to eat just to answer more questions. Like, relax. Give us some love. We don't have to be here. If, and if, <laughs> and if you want to skip over you. the banter, wait until replay. Wait till tomorrow when the replay's fully live, and skip it when I talk. I have a question about E Rank. It says that I've sold more items than 59% of other shops on Etsy. I just started a couple months ago. Is this number a good thing? Yes, it's gonna only it's only going to grow. Uh, and for anybody who feels like those percentages are off, they are not because most people start a shop on Etsy and then they don't stick with it. They end up only selling for a few weeks and then they give up. So when you see that you're in a, a high percentage, you know, that's good. I'm in the top 1%, which is the highest that you can get. So obvi obviously you have a lot of room still to grow, um, but always keep an eye on those numbers and, and pat yourself on the back when you see your percentage go down because that's definitely a good thing. Uh, what about handmade quilted items, holiday marketing strategies? I can't go into specifics marketing, about... S marketing strategies are going to be the same for every industry. It's just how you theme them that are going to be different. Unless you sell like a really one-off style of product, it's going to be the same. Exactly. You need to do research into how big brands market their products in your niche. Because I could... I mean, how many... I think there's like... 14 categories on Etsy and within those, you know, jewelry, there's necklaces, bracelets, yada, yada. I could go hours into ideas. So you've got to do a little bit of research on your part, unfortunately, because I can't cover every product. Somebody asked how your grandma was doing. <laughs> um, we're we not don't sure know yet. Yeah. She's been in the hospital for like three weeks now. Nobody said anything. My so family, yeah, my family isn't telling me anything and the hospital won't tell me anything. So... I don't know yet. I'm freaking out about it. <laughs> Should I keep my two-year-old shop with a few sales or make a new one? That is totally up to you. Totally up to you. Doesn't matter. Do, 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 do. It's your personal preference if you want to start over. Might might do you some good if shoppers go in and they see that, you know, that you're a new shop. Because if they go in and they see that you've been around for two years and you've only got a couple sh sales, they might wonder why. I have a question about gift wrapping. What do you do for gift messages for the holidays? Do you print them on a special holiday card or anything? I personally don't. I, uh, we I, theme our wrapping different. Yeah, I usually add like a little snowflake charm onto my packages. But, I mean, it's totally up to you. You could design out something cool in iPicky and use it as a template and then add their gift messages to it. Um, that's an option. But it's completely up to you how you want to do it. The more that you personalize the experience, the more likely it is that you'll get a good review. So if it's something that you have the time to do or maybe you have some cool card stock that you could use, all of those things are going to help with your marketing and your brand perception. We talk about inserts. Uh, who asked that? Fendi Witch. Oh, okay. Wendy. Um, Wendy, we talk about that in Handmade Alpha Academy in Module 7, I think. Adding value. It's module 7 or Module 8. Uh, I would pay attention to those, those lessons in particular because we talk about inserts and things in there. A bunch of people asking why people would be mean to me. I don't know. I'm not mean to them. I just talk. Why do people do that? People suck. <laughs> people suck. My husband thinks Mark's great with banter. I think he's great, too. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know him at all. That's okay. Uh, stand with I, Mark. I stand with Mark. Yeah, don't. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, don't. I don't want it. Uh-uh. <laughs> that one will get me in trouble. Should I keep using... We already read that. <laughs> oh, uh, they posted that question three separate times. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Love you, too. We love you, too. Ba -ba -ba -ba. I met them both. They're wonderfully kind people. Thank you. We try to be. 
Mm, anyone notice their listing saying top rated instead of best seller? Apparently that's a separate badge. Apparently best seller and top rated are two different ones. Best seller means it sells a lot. And I think top rated means that people are giving it reviews a lot. So those are individual badges. Top rated there. is new though. I, I just heard about that one. Kim, yep. Or yay, I am also in the top 1%. Yay, top 1% club. We need to have like a top 1% club of alphas. Oh, there's four. What? I already answered your question. <laughs> Keep the shop, just rebrand it. Yeah, that's that's pr probably the best advice. Um, bum, 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 bum. Sorry, I missed the answer. Could you say it again? It's up to you. It's up to, it's completely up to you. You can, if you want to redo it, you can totally redo it. Uh, but it, do, it really doesn't matter all that much. It's just how much time you want to dedicate into it. More it's not going to affect up, your guys. sales. Should we update our tags to include holiday gifts now? Uh, yeah, you totally can. Just don't, don't add in keywords into a listing that's already performing well. Uh, especially if you have to take keywords out, I would recommend doing that you know, soon. And then if you have E-Rank Basic or E-Rank Pro, use the monitor tool or not, not monitor. I'm sorry. The, the changes tool within your listings tab and track a listing, let it sit for a few days so that you can start collecting data on that listing, make your change, maybe 10 days later or seven days later, and then see how that change affects your overall views, favorites, and sales. So. Okay. Uh, we'll do this as the last question here. Rachel Bloom, my product takes about a week to make, and I'm really busy right now. Should I work overtime now so that I have enough products for a big Black Friday sale? No slump here. That's that's up to you. If you do any custom products and it takes you a while, just make sure you put some sort of disclaimer in your listings for your custom stuff that your uh, production times may have to be extended. Yeah, definitely. Anything to cover your butt, even if it's not true. Put it in your listings because you never know something pops up, some family emergency or product delay. Or not just supplies. in not just in your listings, but your your uh, listing photos because someone might yeah. not read your description. So stick it on a listing on a listing photo. What we got? Are we good? Yeah, it's getting ready to start pouring here. To yeah. oh, Shelby's right down the road from us. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that actually might be why our internet went out for a couple of minutes. Oh. Because we have Spectrum, and they're an awful company. Under promise and over deliver always. Yes, under promise. Don't talk too much about what you're going to do. Then wow them when they get the end result, and it's going to result in fantastic I mean, reviews. how we've been married for 10 years. <laughs> uh, are people Under still confused about the marked as a gift box at checkout? What's the rest of that say? I can't read I it. offer gift wrapping and worry that people who click the box but don't pay for gift wrapping think they'll get gift box items. Um, that Marked as a gift basically just means that you're not going to include a receipt. Uh, so, yeah, I, I would just maybe make sure that you have a listing photo that says you must select gift wrapping option for your product to come gift wrapped. All right. All right. We have how many likes on this video? We have 96. 96. Let's try to get it to 100. If you get 1,000, I'll stream for an extra 10 minutes next week. We do that anyway. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you can tell he's tired. We've I'm been, so tired. We've been in the gym every day this week. My tendons are I've so been sick. in the gym every day for five weeks. Yeah, that's true. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Oh, 104 likes. We love you. <laughs> Thank you so much for hanging out. If you enjoyed this live stream, despite the fact that it was a little out there, lots of questions, mm -hmm. little hot topic, but I think we had fun. Be sure to give this video a like. Make sure that you leave a nice comment for Mark if you're watching the replay because Mark deserves all the love in Apparently. the world. Everybody give Mark some love. Uh, make sure that if you're not a member of the Handmade Alpha Facebook community and you want to talk about holiday marketing strategies, the link to join that is down below. Down below, you can also grab two of my very, very valuable free PDFs, my holiday, holiday marketing calendars, my 2020 holiday marketing calendars, which are going to tell you when to start pushing specific marketing efforts. Those are going to be very useful over the next few months, so be sure to grab those. My summer survival guide. Guide. Though we are kind of ramping down and we're getting more into fall, you can grab that probably for 
I'll say just a couple more weeks, I'll leave it up if you want it. Otherwise, it's going to disappear and I'm going to get rid of it and you're never going to have it again. So make sure that you get it now before it's gone forever. And you can use it next year too. Um, and then let's see. Uh, uh, that, 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 I think that's it. Think that's it? I, I think that's it. I think that that's everything. All right. And you, do you need a spiel? Do yeah. you have a spiel? Okay. Do I, do I have a spiel? Do you have a spiel? Do you spiel? Go, go, go. Until I was an alpha, I had no idea how much Mark does. It's a lot less than you think. <laughs> he does a lot behind the scenes for Handmade Alpha Academy. He does. Most of my work comes down to the website itself. If something breaks, that's me, and I have to figure it out. Exactly. But that'll be the end of Big Butt. That'll be the, the butt. end of the live stream. If you're not already, make sure you click the subscribe button down below. Make sure you click Big Butt. Click the bell icon for Big Butt. <laughs> now, click the bell icon if you want to be notified every time we go live, every time we upload a video. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Give it a thumbs up if you didn't like it and don't watch any more of them. And, uh, <laughs> drink some water. It's hot outside, guys. Drink some water. You're probably not drinking enough water. Do we have a bean of the week? We don't, and I'm going to be redoing. So the way that we chose bean of the week was by choosing the most active alpha in the Facebook group based on our membership analytics, but it's always the same four people over and over again. So I need to think this week of some new criteria that we're going to use to choose our bean of the week. I think I'm going to do top contributors and visual storytellers. So I think that's probably going to make things a little bit easier. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because right now I'm just giving the same shout outs over and over again. We'll work on the criteria. We yeah, love you though. We'll get that figured out. And that's that's pretty much it. I think I think we're good. This video gets a, a thousand likes and I'll I'll make an OnlyFans and I'm gonna bake cakes on it. It'll just be videos of me baking cake. You're not gonna be naked, are you? No. Okay. <laughs> That's 10,000 likes. No. Just <laughs> <laughs> we love you guys. Why do these always get weird at the end? They always get weird at the end because we have nothing else to say and it's awkward and there's two minutes till 1.30, so I figured I would just drag it out, but I'm not going to. We love you. We love you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, Happy Friday. And it's done.